Hi guys, today I'd like to share with you my adventure from uh, Redding, California to Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, now, for those of you who watched my first couple episodes, you know that I was a little bit ill-prepared. I didn't educate myself a lot, didn't necessarily have the right equipment, but I went for it anyway. Uh, my first stop on the journey was great. Redding was really, really good to me, but the misadventures would start soon thereafter. So if you can, learn from my mistakes, have a laugh at my expense, and enjoy the video. I had leaks everywhere. And, and this is a camper that I'd already been living in for three years in Reno, and the leaks just weren't exposed there in the high desert. Even though it rained a little bit, we didn't have the torrential downpours for days and days at a time. But Redding was a different story. And before you know it, I was doing my best to tarp up that roof and, and wait for the first opportunity to hire somebody and, and help me fix this roof. What a great guy. Now, this guy worked hours and hours and hours on, on my leaks, and just he did a, a masterful job. And the best part is he just refused to take any payment from me. I mean, I really tried to pay this guy because he worked so hard on this roof. Uh, and, and that's what you'll encounter uh, as a full-time RV or just running into great people like this. And he did a great job. And we got to test the roof leaks right away. So I bounced my way down to Petaluma, California, at least most of the way. Mind you, I didn't have any trouble from Re uh, Reno to Redding, uh, but my rear end just wouldn't quit bouncing. And I didn't know what the problem was. I didn't have the right tires. As it turns out, you really have to have a good set of 10-ply tires to handle the weight of towing. Now, I realize all these broken dishes have something to do with the bumpy ride, but there's a small possibility I forgot to latch one of the cabinets, too. So my first tip on my learn-as-I-go RV journey is to always latch the cabinets. So my second tip is this. You need at least 10-ply tires to tow a heavy trailer. When it comes to towing matters, always ask an RVer, not a mechanic. While it's ultimately going to be up to the mechanic to do the job, they may not necessarily know what you need as much as an RVer does. Now, because I'm a rookie RVer, I want to take as much stress off of me as possible, and I haven't learned how to back up my trailer yet. So at this stage of the journey, only pull through sites for me. And it's been working so far until I ran into a tree. It's a pull through site, right? How in the world do I run into a tree? Well, I don't know. I guess I had been used to watching for things more on the ground rather than 10 feet in the air. And uh, somehow, yeah, I wedged myself onto this tree and it wouldn't let go. Backward, forward, every which way I tried, I could not get this thing unwedged from the tree. Embarrassingly enough, it took about five people to figure out how to maneuver it off of the tree. But again, how great are these RVers? These campers, they just love to help. Okay, don't panic yet. This is not actually an RV story, but I thought I'd throw it in there for fun. It is kind of scary, though. So here's what happened. I was uh, in Sonoma. Uh, and I highly recommend Sonoma. Uh, I was bouncing around from vineyard to vineyard, uh, uh, doing some wine tastings at some of the wineries and, and people watching at others and just enjoying the views. Um, I was just having a blast. After a few hours of this, I'm feeling pretty good about myself and I see another beautiful vineyard and I see the winery just up the driveway. So uh, I ride my scooter up the driveway and sure enough, I walk right into somebody's living room. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that they had a good laugh about it or uh, that they were super happy me interrupting their dinner, uh, but they were actually really, really cool about it. And uh, I, I went on my way and uh, went straight back to camp. I think it was time to call it a day. Now, 
Now, as you probably know, it's very important for big cats to mark the territory, and I'm no exception. I'm a 200 plus pound river cat. Now, I'm very pleased to say this one wasn't my fault. In fact, if I had not taken the proper precaution, this could have been much, much worse. Now, before I embarked on this journey, I had Meineke uh, install a leaf spring kit. These aren't your normal leaf springs. It's actually a kit that goes above the axle. Now, with my particular van, there's actually a coolant hose that goes to the back uh, for the AC. Uh, it can't be bypassed, it can't be disconnected. Unbeknownst to me, when Meineke uh, installed this kit, they rested this coolant hose on top of an upright bolt. Now, naturally, after that coolant hose vibrates on top of that bolt for a while, it's going to rupture. This little adventure would cost me about a week at a wonderfully expensive KOA. It was a very nice park uh, right on the river, uh, and I enjoyed it immensely but it was kind of pricey. For certain repair jobs that you know can and might go wrong down the road, always get it done at a national chain. Baker Gray goes by many names and it is a beast. Now initially when I studied it in my Mountain Directory West, it didn't look like much on paper because it's only a 3% a grade. And when you come upon a 3% grade, you don't even notice it. It actually looks flat. Then you start seeing all the ominous warning signs like slower traffic, keep right, uh, uh, don't overheat, and turn off your AC. It was 105 degrees out. I was not turning off my AC. A few miles later, I start seeing more and more trucks on the shoulder overheating. And then normal sized cars, smaller cars, it was crazy. There were vehicles overheating everywhere. Next thing you know, my vehicle slowed down to a crawl. In disbelief, I rolled down the windows and turned off the AC. Now you might be thinking, wow, what a trip. I mean, this guy just went through the state of California and had all these misadventures. Is it even worth it? So yeah, for me, being the adventurer sort, it's definitely worth it. Uh, I will admit that uh, it, it'll be nice to spend a few weeks in Las Vegas while I work at the World Series of Poker to kind of regroup. 